Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Expert Media Show. This is your host and teacher, Tony Ladig, and welcome to session number nine. Tonight, we're going to talk about logo design hacks, and it kind of ties into the course that we just started yesterday, which is also our sponsor for the show, Merch Design Revolution. And uh, we kicked things off with module one last week, or last week yesterday last night time just kind of melds together you know at least in my head anyway but anyway uh we were talking about logos and branding and stuff like that so i thought it'd be kind of fun to just kind of continue the conversation into this training so we're going to talk about designing logos for your business but kind of take it a little bit further beyond that and dig into product uh, creation and development, those kinds of things as well. If you have any kind of business or you're making any kind of products or courses or books or anything, chances are likely that you need some kind of logo because they are the visual identity for our businesses, for our services, our events, merchandise, whatever the case may be. Um, I use logos all the time. You can see at the bottom left, we have the logo for Expert Media Show, which is extremely updated from the original Expert Media Show logo, but it's just an identity. It's a brand. And what its purpose is really is to establish a clear representation in the marketplace. It's what sets you apart. Even if you have two products or services or businesses or whatever with the same name, it's the logo that differentiates you, right? It's That's what makes you stand out. And of course, identity branding is another effective use for logos. And that is when um, you use a logo design for specifically for merchandising, okay? They, so it goes beyond just, this is the logo for my company. Like the logo for my online company or the the name of it is Expert Media Group LLC and I have a logo for that, but I'm not going to use that to make products. Okay, that's just my business name and a logo that identifies my business. Identity branding is much different. Okay, that's uh, and we'll get into a little bit of that distinction uh, here in uh, just a moment. And Thomas really makes a good point here. He says, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And that's really true. That's why it's so important to nail this from the beginning. And I'm going to um, kind of guide you through some basic steps. And then if we have time, I have a, a fun case study that we can get into just to kind of show you the routine that I go through in uh, creating uh, brand logos. So they provide a foundation for guiding and creating identity-based products when you're using logos for identity branding. Um, one of the examples that I gave last night, or a couple of them, think like Apple or Pepsi-Cola or something like that. Yes, they manufacture their own products or you know source them in some way, but they also use their logos for identity branding. So you can find merchandise that has the Pepsi logo on it, that has the Apple logo on it, so on and so forth. And people will buy and identify with those products because at the core, we all want to belong to something. We want to connect with something that shares our values or that expresses our interests or goals or you know those kinds of things. And that's really what identity branding is all about. So it... Logos also help establish the look and feel of our brand through the colors, the fonts, the graphic styles that we choose, and a lot more. Um, if we take the, just think about this. Let's say that we uh, have a company name or a brand that we want to develop, and it revolves around dogs. Okay. Well, when you think about all the different breeds of dogs that exist, and even if you just pick one, like um, Huskies, okay, I used to have a Husky, um, Cola, some of you probably remember him, and uh, just even within Cola's, you know, being a Husky, 
Huskies can take on a lot of different forms. They can be um, the look that a Husky has is unique compared to other dogs. And, uh, but you can still communicate that graphically in a lot of different ways from outlines or using polygonal designs or black and white color line drawings. I mean, it just goes on and on. And all of those ultimately help to establish the look and feel for your brand. Okay. I mean, you can do variations on the theme, of course, but it's still important to not just randomly pick something and say, this is good enough, you know, because Thomas is right. You may not get a second chance to connect with people that are uh, checking out your, your business or your brand. So these are a couple of the different brands and logos that uh, we have or have created. Um, some are better than others. Uh, I probably created about two thirds, maybe, or a little over half. And um, so this is my company name, my company logo. This is our joint company, Interact. Uh, Grain A is one of Kristen's companies that she just recently sold last year, casual entrepreneur, startup ninja book ninja, but then our our nerd store, Nerdvana Outpost, uh, Toy Box Kiss and Wonder. Um, Nerdish was my e-com store and brand. Wonderkin Publishing is what we're publishing everything under currently, any books that we create. Wacky Robot, we're using for toys and games. Magic and Wizardry Supply Company um, is a brand that we've been developing in our store um, using um, uh, basically white labeling products. Play Space, we just created a logo for our actual Play Space. That's right outside my window here. Um, Precious Pastimes is the antique booze that we used to have. Um, and I'm not going to explain all of them, but just a lot of different kinds of uh, approaches. And like I said, some are better than others. Some we're not even using anymore. But I just kind of wanted to show you the diversity of them all. Uh, just to kind of get a feel for some of the things that we've done. And some of the different reasons behind why they exist. So when it comes to hacking a logo design, um, the way I look at it, logo designs are really just visual metaphors or icons that represent your business or your brand. That's really what they are. You want to be able to communicate the name of your company or the, the purpose of your brand or whatever very quickly. And visual metaphors are the easiest way to do that, symbolism or icons, right? Um, and so what is your business or brand name? Okay, just kind of going through the process here. Is there an icon graphic that sums up your business or brand? Okay, like one of the ones that I've been developing is, um, it's called Bear Mountain. Uh, Bear Mountain merch, and it's a derivative off of the um, original logo that I created called uh, Bear Creek Mining Company, which was related to one of our business ventures uh, that uh, included dinosaurs and rocks and minerals and fossils and stuff like that. And we no longer have that right now, and but I really like the logo because I just personally identify with bears and all of that. Long story, but... Um, so bear mountain merch, obviously it would make sense for me to have a bear and a mountain or a representation of those. And, um, actually I didn't include a picture of that logo in this particular set of slides, but at a quick glance, it sums up what that brand is about. And it is, a um, a, a brand more than a company. Okay. In that particular instance. Which colors and fonts best represent you? You know, and this can be personal interest, personal preference, or whatever. And these aren't questions that you can necessarily answer quickly. Um, sometimes getting to the correct answer takes a little bit of trial and error, as you'll see a little later when we get into the case study. What is the purpose for the logo? Is it just an identifier for your company, or are you using are you planning to use the logo actually on merchandise that you'll sell? You know, usually it's one or the other or both. 
what is going to be the largest and smallest size that you need. It's another thing that you definitely want to consider. I tend to design large just because you never know how it's going to be used. But one of the smartest things you can do is reduce it down super small because if you end up putting it on business cards or make stickers or some of those kinds of things, a lot of details can get lost or not print clearly. If you reduce it down from, say, a 10 by 10 inch at 300 dots per inch logo versus reducing it down to a half an inch, um, things change. And if you're creating your design in, um, as a pixel-based design, like in Photoshop, versus a vector design, like you would use Adobe Illustrator, um, even that has an impact. With Illustrator and vectors, you can make them large or small, and they, they're resolution independent. So it doesn't really matter how big you go, it's still going to be sharp. Doesn't matter how small you go, it's still going to be sharp. However, if you have outlines or those kinds of things, the smaller you go, the smaller the lines are, and you can uh, actually lose some of that detail, especially depending on the kinds of products that you want to make and how you're planning to use that logo. Like, for instance, um, just a quick example off the top of my head, the way you handle your logo for embroidering a hat is different than how you would handle the logo even at the same size if you were making um, like magnets or stickers or something like that or, you know, printing it on a shirt or something. So you want to keep that in mind as you're thinking about how to create a logo. Uh, and so that begs the question, pixel-based or vector-based? Now, I tend to design in Photoshop first. And it's, it's honestly a bad habit. <laughs> because ultimately, if I create a design that I like, I have to end up recreating it as a vector because of how we do what we do with different devices and working with sign companies and all of the or, or merch companies uh, more often than not they prefer vectors um, the exception might be like if you're making t-shirt designs or something like that then they need to be pngs in most cases but um so usually i i just i'm more comfortable in photoshop which is why i design that way and then once I get something the way I like it, I can honestly, I do pretty well in Illustrator, so I can recreate something very quickly in Illustrator. But as far as fluid creativity and workflow, I just work better initially in Photoshop. So for me, in most cases, it's easier to start in Photoshop and then switch over to Illustrator rather than the other way around. It's probably just a mental block. <laughs> And something that I need to get over, who knows? It's my one of my neuroses. But I started in Photoshop. That's why I think I just got used to it. And I, you know, I've been using Photoshop since 1992, so a while now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I digress. So whenever I'm wanting to make a logo. Uh, like come up with a new design or something like that. I always start with image research, typically on Google. And what I'm looking for are existing options based on whatever name the company is or whatever name the brand is or whatever. And or something that's theme related. And, because I want to see what I like and what I don't like. Typically, there's going to be a lot that you don't like. And that's good. I mean, that's fine. Because... All of it is to kind of give you a starting point, to give you a direction, because we're not really interested in copying what other people are doing. We're just looking for a starting point. That's really the goal. So uh, really visual inspiration, you know, um, because one of the things that I look at, and I'm going to take you through this process here in just a minute, but one of the things that I look for is styles. You know, so whenever I'm doing a search, I'm looking for style and color and how it all interplays together so i'm not interested in mimicking what somebody else has done but the general direction i may like i'm also looking for font inspiration because fonts is one of those things that just changing a font from one thing to another 
can radically change the appearance of your design. And then, of course, color. And color actually plays a really important role. Like, for instance, if you were designing a, a brand logo for an outdoors company, chances are likely you're not going to use purple and pink. You know what I mean? That just doesn't quite communicate the same thing as brown and like army green would. And so you definitely want to pay attention to that. Now, in some cases, depending on the kind of brand that you're developing, pink may make perfect sense or multiple colors like uh, color themes like um, pastels or earth tones, which is where I tend to default to. I prefer earth tones in most cases. One lesson that I really learned in that, though, is in designing for the children's market, um, I would do these really cool designs in muted earth tone colors, and then we would test them out with kids, and the parents loved them, kids hated them. Kids wanted bright colors, really vibrant, bright colors. And so it forced me to rethink how I create whenever I'm creating for that market. So it definitely plays an important role. So once I have some basic ideas of what I want to go or where I want to go, then I'll search for existing graphics like vectors, especially starting with public domain sites. And, you know, my default is always Pixabay. That's the first place that I go. And um, just because if you can start off with free, like I am not a proponent of literally starting from scratch. You know, and you having to draw every aspect of it and all of that, that's just silly. I mean, there's tons of graphics that are out there, either on public domain sites or on paid sites, that will give you a leg up um, in getting started that it just makes sense to do that. Most of the, of the uh, logos that I've created, there's some exceptions, but most of the logos I've created, once I got that inspiration and direction, uh, ultimately, it was based on designs that I found on Pixabay or some other site. So um, once you have those elements, then that's when the experimenting begins. I recommend, especially if you already have a graphic that you find that you kind of like, you may reserve the right to change it um, or, you know, go with designing in black and white versus color. But I like to try different fonts together with the found graphics. Um, just cycle through fonts. Sometimes it could be a combination of fonts. But uh, you also want to experiment with sizes. That can make a big difference. Um, how the sizes interact with the graphics, whether the fonts are just presented in a horizontal way, in a vertical way, in circles. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can handle fonts. And then you can also test different color schemes. You know, what I rec recommend doing, what I often do is I'll create a color scheme that I kind of like, but then I'll add a, um, a hue adjustment layer, hue and saturation adjustment layer, and then start playing with the sliders to see how the colors change as I change the hue. Sometimes I actually find a better color combination than the one that I started with. And then also ask for feedback, not from somebody who's just going to tell you what you want to hear and who loves everything that you do, regardless of whether it's good or not, but honest feedback, you know, either from a spouse or a friend or something that's, who's going to be honest with you or just post it to social media, <laughs> ask for honest input. That can be scary sometimes, but more times than not, you're going to get good feedback. What I often do, depending on the timeline that I'm on, um, but I do this more than not, is once I have a design pretty much the way I like it, or even if I'm not quite there yet and I know that, I'll just set it aside for a couple of days and then revisit it. And usually, like if I still like it after I revisit it, then I'm good. But what I found is that usually there's tweaks that I, you know, that come to mind. Sometimes when I'm not thinking about it, that's when the ideas start to flow. Uh, so in essence, your original design kind of serves like priming the pump, you know, the creative pump. 
And so I want to make sure that the design fits with the brand in the best way possible without overthinking it. And this is really important because, as you know, we can definitely get lost in the details, uh, you know, in perfection. And our goal is to get it done, ultimately. Yes, you don't want to just slap things together. I mean, that's basically a waste of time and energy. But you also don't want to keep tinkering and keep tinkering and keep tinkering to where you ultimately never do anything with that logo. Like that's, to me, that's almost worse than getting something done and it not be perfect. You can always go back and update it or change it um, as opposed to never actually doing anything with it because it just doesn't meet your standard, but you don't know how to get it to whatever imaginary standard you set for it. Okay. So just to kind of take you through this process now, I have um, an idea that I came up with for a case study, and I haven't done any advanced design on this at all, and very, very little thinking, other than coming up with the name. And uh, it's for brand design, a logo for brand design, and the name is Category 9. And... Um, the whole premise of it is it's really a play on words. Like I have a very basic idea of what I want to do. And the whole concept of category nine is actually a brand that centers around cats. Okay. And so nine is an allusion to the nine lives of cats. And of course, the word cat starts off category. And what kind of popped out to me is if you break it down, and this is how I want to lay it out, um, at least initially, it's always subject to change, is you have cat, if you break it into threes, you have cat, ego, and then ry, and the number nine. So it's three levels of three letters. So cat, ego, ry, nine, which... You know, if you're a cat person, you know that cats have the ultimate ego. They own everything. Uh, so I thought it would be a fun play on words. But I haven't done any research on it yet. I just literally thought, it, uh, thought of it in prep for tonight's training. So what we're going to do is switch over here to Google, our trusty friend. And... Um, one thing that I've discovered in the research is if I want to say, if I just type in cat, uh, cat graphic, sometimes you can uh, get some, some good logos, but you want to define it somehow. Um, just say graphic, logo, something like that, because otherwise you're just going to get a bunch of photographs of cats. And even with this, if I switch over to images, because I have um, graphic in here, I'm getting exactly that, okay? Which is good. Um, if I typed in icon, you get a different set of graphics that are much more simple, which is what, what I often prefer. You can also use um, illustration, but in that case, you may get more photographic type illustrations, which in most cases aren't going to serve you for developing a logo. Um, and uh, let's see, drawing, cartoon, art. So, you know, vector, can be a good one because that will limit your results and perhaps bring up something that could work well for you know one of the sites you may see a site where you can actually go find a logo that you like um, so those are just some of the search terms that I'll usually use whatever your keyword is or keywords and then icon vector graphic you know something like that so I think for this one I'm gonna go with icon just because I tend to like simple. I like simple designs. And um, so we have category nine, 
And honestly, I have no idea um, what kind of graphic that I would want to use for this, at least not yet. Um, so in this case, as you would imagine, we can go cute like we have here. We can go silhouette, very basic outline. We can get a little uh, risque, <laughs> which actually this could be appropriate looking at a cat's butthole. Um, you know, very stylized or, you know, something more kitschy. Um, you know, so there's definitely a lot of different directions. I mean, how many different ways can you portray a cat? You know, you have this, uh, this cat here that's more like Pusheen, um, as opposed to an outline or silhouette that looks more realistic versus one that's very stylized, but then there's even cat uh, paw prints, right? Um, again, very cutesy, very uh, rugged, stylized. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of choices here. <laughs> Gary says, you don't have cats. They let you play with them. Exactly. And uh, he also says a cattail makes a good nine. Yeah, and I actually thought about that. It, that came to me. Um, so in this case, uh, category nine, I'm thinking should probably be something a little more sassy or edgy. That's just what I'm thinking. Subject to change, of course. But um, just kind of scroll down through what we have here so far. Um, I kind of really like that. It's sort of ninja-like. Well, and actually it says that ninja cat. So I like this one. I like the butthole graphic, of course. Um, a lot of these don't necessarily appeal to where I think I want to go. Although that's cute with a cat standing on a bear. I, I kind of like that just because I like bears. Um, This could be appropriate. The sleeping cat. I like that. Ultimately, um, you can get some basic ideas here. And one of the things that I'm looking at is style. So I don't really want something in color as much as I want something simple. And so... Um, let's see... So I saw, I think right now in my mind, the, uh, the current winner is the Ninja Cat icon. So this is cool. So then, you know, refine the search a little bit more. This one's kind of cool because it looks a bit like an alien cat. I like this a lot. This is cool. This is the original one that I saw, which is also cool. Um... So this is a free icon. And um, it's an attribution though. That kind of stinks. So it's a PNG. So if we wanted to really use it, we would have to modify it in some way. But we can keep that in mind. Um, let's see, what else do we got? So here's a, an outline version of the same thing. So in this case, there's an SVG. So I'm going to download the SVG because that's a vector. We can uh, open that up at any size in Photoshop. Um, what else do we got? There's another variation of that. That's pretty funny right there. See, a lot of these are kind of corny, like this here. I'm not into it all, or this. But we have a basic direction. So the next thing I want to do is go over to um, Pixabay. 
and um, if we type in cat and ninja, see what we get there. Not really a lot. Although this image here, if we silhouette out or just cut out the cat here, it could be appropriate, but let's just go with cat and vector. See what we get. That's way over the top from where I want to go. Too cute. Too cute. Although I like it. Um, I definitely like the kawaii style of illustrations. See, I like this actually is kind of cool. The whole attitude, catitude thing. I've used this illustration before. This is interesting. I kind of like this. This is a little too much. Um, that just isn't well designed. I kind of like this style here a little bit. Um, let's see. There could always be the prints too. This is a dog print though. Now another site that I use sometimes if I decide that I want to pay or you know go with a paid design is um, Creative Market. I've bought some stuff there. You you definitely want to go with a commercial license, but most of the logos that you'll find there are pretty inexpensive even for like an extended commercial license so that's a possibility to go with the print i like this <laughs> just because it's uh an old time favorite of mine. I, I'm not quite, I don't think he's in the public domain, honestly. I mean, this illustration is, but I don't think the character is. This is kind of cool. I like that. It's different. That's kind of badass there, but it's not really a cat as much as it is, well, a cougar. I like geometric like that. That could be kind of fun. See, I don't know. I mean, I know where this illustration is from. And this particular cartoon of Felix the Cat is actually in the public domain. But I, I'm not sure if the character is trademarked or not. That's something that we'd have to research if we wanted to use it. Because I, I love Felix the Cat. I have original art and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. So you kind of get the idea of what I was talking about earlier, where there can be so many different representations of like an animal in this particular case. And yet, you know, there's very few, if any, that actually strike, you know, strike my fancy. You may have seen several for something that you would design. And, you know, that's one of the cool things about creating branded designs is that everyone's different. So what appeals to me may not appeal to you at all. So we have two more pages. We'll see what we find.
Actually, I really like that. That's kind of cool. I don't think it would look right for what I have in mind, but I like it. Yeah, so. So I think what I'm going to do is just to not draw this out. Um, open up this vector. We'll just play with this, play with type a little bit and see where we end up. This is literally what I do every time I'm creating a a logo. So I'm going to create this. Open it up 2000. Okay. So we want to give it more breathing room here. So I'm going to make this like 5,000 by 5,000, just kind of change the canvas size. Okay. And I'm going to put in a layer here and just fill it to white. So we have some kind of a background. And so with this being on its own layer, I can actually lock that layer and then fill this to whatever color I want. Okay. So in this case, we'll just start with black and then reserve the right to change it later. All right, so I'm gonna scoot this out of the way for now. Uh, usually I will draw a center line, just, it just makes life easier. And of course in Photoshop, it will snap to center. Now, the next thing we wanna do is uh, play with the type a little bit and um, I'm just going, I don't even know what font that I'm in, Helvetica New. So I'm going to type in all uppercase for now, cat ego ry9. And let's change this to black. And kind of spread it out a little bit. So category is what we're after here. And um, I'll just put zero in between and maybe change this to 175 to bring it all together. So one thing that I'll do, uh, very often is I will start off with a font set that I use as a control. Okay. Um, meaning that it is essentially the standard that everything else gets judged with. So I want to reduce the space here. Maybe. So I have my control. And then I'll make a copy and then start trying other fonts. So if you don't highlight the layer, the fonts on the layer, but just choose the type tool and then hit the drop down as you mouse over the different fonts, it will reveal, you know, what the font looks like. That way it saves you a lot of time. Now, um, it's funny, the Milray stuff is a font that I really like as well. That's why it's in the top section. And earlier, um, I think it was Gary mentioned about how the cat tail and the number nine. So in this font, it actually kind of has that cat curl to it. It's kind of cool. I mean, this that's a possible font to use. The scripts aren't going to work. Um, Impact is always a go-to just because it stands out really well. 
So we could go like something like that, but it's virtually unreadable. And that's one thing that you have to keep in mind is you don't want to make it hard for people to read. Um, but what I typically find is in a design setting, it's actually the font and the font picking that takes me the longest personally, because I like fonts. I have a lot of fonts installed and in some cases, I don't know what I like until I see it. This font here has some potential. Um, I really like the shape of some of the letters, like the G is cool, the R. So that's what Babelstone, that's a possibility. Um, basically the same thing, but smaller than what we have already. But as you can see, just kind of cycling through these different fonts can make a huge difference in how it's seen in the real world, right? So in this case, because it's a more square type of font, ego is wider. And um, so we, in this case, if we wanted to keep it very block-like, we would probably need to reduce the font size for that, which is not that big of a deal, but just something to keep you know, keep in mind. Some of these just aren't going to work at quick glance. Um, nope. It's kind of groovy. I really like the look of the nine and a G in that. That's cool. Some of these are a lot, uh, way too much stylized for us to be able to get away with something for logo design. And another thing that I'm thinking about as I cycle down through these, just FYI, is, um, how would this look on a t-shirt or a mug or something like that? How will it interplay with the uh, logo if we even decide to use a, uh, or with the uh, graphic, excuse me. So there's our impact. So honestly, there's not a lot that I've seen so far that I really like. Very sci-fi. That's actually kind of cool. Now, one thing um, that I want to show you here when we make a, an initial font choice which I'm just gonna make one um, to keep the ball rolling, so to speak. That's kind of cool too, but it won't work. Too hard to read. Okay, so I'm kind of down with two different ones, although at the end of the day, I think this is gonna be the easiest to read, but this one here on the left is a lot more fun. So like if we played around with the logo, one thought that I did have that could work um, to help kind of differentiate, like right now it all kind of blends together, especially with this font. But if we change the color, I just like this color. I don't know that it's a good choice, but. So one of the things that I like to do from a design perspective is lead people's eyes in very specific ways. So like 
one way you could do that is to like colorize just part of the word even though it spells category some people aren't going to figure that out right away um, but by using color we can actually accomplish that a little bit let me um oops trying to trying to uh hide the guides so that's one possibility let me hide this other one for now and move this guy around a little bit so if we See, I don't even know if I like that. So another thing that I will often do, because you have to start somewhere, is do variations on the theme. So we can bring it all together. Maybe make this a little smaller. Um, what am I looking for? Uh -huh. uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but here's a thought. Let's try. Actually, I have a different thought. Um, it's just kind of, um, expand maybe five, create a new layer below. So that's a possibility. And another thing we could do possibly is put like little pupil dots. Problem that you run into when you have hot corners set up in your monitor. All right. So I, it's kind of starting to come together, I think, a little bit. I'm liking it better than how it was stacked before. I thought the stacking was clever, but it didn't, at the end of the day, it didn't come out well. Um, another thought that I had was, um, we'll just try one more thing. Actually, I want to make it two copies. So with this copy, we're going to what I'm looking for here. And then this copy, we're going to delete. Let's go this way.
maybe something like this, but not quite sure. That's different. I don't know if I like it, but it's different. Um, just kind of borrowing a Hoagari shared. I think we're getting there. The answer may actually be keeping it the same font size. It doesn't really look like category nine now, but if you look hard enough, it's there. Yeah, Gary says, I don't see enough ego. Well, one way we could handle that is to actually make the RY the teal also. Um, and then another thing that we could do that just kind of popped into my head is let's, um, and I think we'll wrap up with this. Here. And we'll um, transform clip. You know, play around with something like that, perhaps. Looks like his second eyebrow is a little too low. You know, so maybe something like that. At least as a starting point. Now, I would probably massage this a little bit further but i think it's off to a good start you know what i mean like i could see this on products and that's kind of my goal with this brand which i don't know if it's a real brand that i'll develop or anything it's just more a case study but you kind of get the idea of my process because it just it's a thought process um and says to make the nine tail black might work. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that could work for sure. So I'm going to save this just so that I have it. Category nine. Watch six months from now, I'll come across this and it'll be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so that's really my process. This is the exact process that I go through every single time I'm creating a, a logo. The alternative is if you don't want to create one yourself, you can always hire it out, you know, or go to a site that sells logos and buy one. You could use Fiverr. There's plenty of folks there that can make them for you. Um, I like the creative process just because it gives me a little bit more control. Um, because sometimes you can come up with some pretty badass looking designs and, uh, you know, any one of these that I would change, like even the font, 
is going to make a difference. You know, and maybe the color is wrong, the green. Maybe it would look better in red. I tend to like red and black together. But, you know, I also like this color. So, anyway, that's all that I have. Anybody have any other comments or questions before we wrap this one up? Kind of went a little longer than I expected, but it is what it is. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. And um, from now on, Expert Media Show Live will be at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays. And um, the replay for this one should be up in the next several days. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. And thank you to everybody who's saying thanks. Uh, you're very welcome. And we will talk again soon.